I decided to try beekeeping and to my shock we harvested over 35 kilograms of honey from just one hive in the first eight months. And this isn't even all of it. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Bee. I mean me. And in this video, I'm going to give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of honey from just one beehive. Let's buzz into it. Okay, you've got me. I'm not technically growing my own honey, but I am in theory helping to grow bees that gather the nectar, fan it down to evaporate it into the honey that we harvest and enjoy. Now I want to stress that I'm an absolute beginner at keeping bees, which I don't think is a bad thing because sometimes raw advice oh, with hell. the odd imperfection is better than the heat treated clarified stuff with all the goodness taken out. Believe me, I won't add any sweeteners or shy away from a sticky situation when I tell you how it is. Tip number one, get a bee coach. With the help of my bee coach or bee mentor, Peter, I've been able to have someone beside me to give first-hand advice, and this has been invaluable. For me, beekeeping has always seemed too hard and too time-consuming to get into. You could say that I'm a bit of a busy bee myself, trying to do all these things on our self-sufficient property, plus do YouTube at the same time. And I had this fear of buying a beehive and then watching it slowly fail because I didn't know what I was doing and didn't have the time to do it. And in the process, wasting bees, honey, and money. But a bee, but a bee, but a bee, but a bee, but a boom. But a bee coach was a godsend. And Peter gave me the confidence to dive right into beekeeping without the worry of making any fatal mistakes. And believe me, I would have made some terrible mistakes without him watching over me and intervening when necessary. In my case, bee coaching is a paid service Peter provides, but you might have a friend or a relative who can help guide you initially and teach you some of the fundamentals as you work on your beehive. Sure, with online resources and books, you can learn beekeeping yourself and have a go at it. However, having someone guide you in real time is best if you can get it. And it has the advantage of teaching things besides the formal stuff, such as getting a good hive with friendly bees to begin with. Yep, this is something I didn't know until I started keeping bees, but bees have personalities. You can get bad bees and thus nasty hives, and I'm not talking about a bad skin condition. I'm talking about bees that will genuinely hate you and attack you every time you come near them. On the other hand, you can get friendly bees that collectively are really nice and tame. And even if you accidentally kill some, they won't hold a grudge. Now that's my kind of bee. The other thing Peter taught me was not to overcrowd the hive. Less is more. So instead of fitting 10 frames in this 10 frame hive, Peter recommended we remove one and do nine to allow for easy maintenance and expansion through unexpected high hive honey production periods, which we had a lot of. And I'll tell you what, that was a mouthful. Tip number two, inspect your hive regularly. Apparently every few weeks is a good interval for inspecting your beehive. Although to be honest, this did sometimes lapse to monthly and a little more on a few occasions due to time constraints and weather conditions. You just can't inspect the hive at any time. During cool periods or if it's raining, it can be damaging and you can even kill the next generation of bees if you open the hive up at the wrong time. The reason why you inspect your bees regularly is to check for pests so you can take the necessary action before the hive gets overwhelmed. Queen, is she still there? If not, get a new one quickly before the hive buzzes off. Offspring, make sure the queen is still laying eggs and you can see the newly hatched larva and brood because without the next generation, the hive has no future. 
honey. Is the hive making honey? And if yes, is there too much honey crowding the hive out, placing the hive in danger of swarming? If there's little honey, why is that? Do the bees need feeding or moving? Which brings me on to tip number three, select a good location. I selected this location for our bees because I thought that a good shaded position would be good for the bees in our really hot, extremely humid climate. It was co-located with our chickens, so any pests like hive beetle that were kicked out of the hive would be gobbled up. This spot was also away from the home for safety reasons. Plus the bees had easy access to the bushland and could take advantage of the native flowers. Unfortunately, and somewhat belatedly, I got told that having bees in the shade was not a good idea. They are pretty good at regulating their own hive temperature. They also don't mind being in full sun. And a shaded spot might allow pests like hive beetle to multiply more than usual. Regardless, I decided to ignore the advice because it was too hard to move them and keep the hive there for the time being with the full notion that I would probably have to move the hive in the future. And moving a beehive is not as easy as just taking it from A to B. There's a fair process in it so it doesn't stuff up their gyro and then you'll lose the hive because they don't know where to come back to. Anyway, eight months on and the hive is thriving. There are some hive beetles, but no more than normal, and bee activity has been above expectations. I thought I did have an issue just the other day when I suddenly found the bees gathering outside the hive. So in a panic, I took some video and sent it to my bee coach, Peter, who calmly reassured me that it was just the bees getting some fresh air due to the extremely hot weather we were having. Therefore, I see no reason to move the bees at this stage out of this partly shaded area. They have plenty of flowering trees and plants. They are easy for me to access and they're in a convenient spot overall. Tip number four, equipment. Be prepared initially anyway, to fork out quite a bit of money to start keeping bees. I know that there are so-called cost-effective ways to get into beekeeping. You might be a real DIY worker bee and make everything you need from recycled materials and then go and capture a wild swarm costing you practically nothing. Or you might source second-hand equipment and get everything on the cheap. Realistically, I think the easiest and fastest way to get set up is to buy everything new and that's exactly what I did. It was a lot of equipment and it wasn't cheap. You have your protective gear like a bee suit and gloves, the basic equipment like a hive tool, smoker, brush and blower, harvesting and storage such as extractors, uncapping knives, buckets, jars and bottles. And of course, depending on the type, the hive itself could cost anything from a few hundred to thousands. I know that over time you can recoup some of these costs by selling all your excess honey, but just like my garden beds and gardening tools, I don't factor it in as an expense. I think of it as an investment. Here's another really sort of simple but out there example. Say you do a kitchen renovation and you replace your oven with one of the top line, top notch best ovens you can get. Do you then start calculating how many homemade meals you make in it before you recoup the costs of that oven? No, you don't, and that's what I mean. Tip number five, harvesting your honey. Well, unsurprisingly, this is my favorite part of beekeeping. Just like growing your own fruit and veg, there's nothing like the taste of your own honey. When you buy supermarket honey, it's often been heat treated, which makes it runnier, but also removes some of the natural goodness. And then there's the cases of honey being mixed with glucose to make it go further without the consumer knowing. Natural homegrown honey is so cherished that when you give a bottle away to say family and friends, they grab hold of it like you're giving them a fine bottle of wine. A taste of honey tasting much sweeter than wine. I think that was a song by the Hive Beetles, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I thought I would feel guilty 
taking away the bees hard-earned food. Apparently it takes 36 bees and six weeks to make just a tablespoon of honey. I'm not kidding. But you know, I don't feel guilty at all because I've learned that if you don't harvest the excess honey and you leave the hive overflow, the bees will bugger off and go live somewhere else. It turns out that bees love to be busy. Who would have thought? So harvesting some of your own bees honey is not just a good thing, but a necessary thing to do. So why is my hive so successful? 35 kilograms in just eight months. And this here isn't all of it. We've already given away 10 kilograms. And of course we've probably eaten two. Well, it all comes down to having a healthy hive of bees and a healthy surrounding environment free from pesticides that has plenty of nectar and pollen for the bees to collect. Our thriving vegetable garden and fruit trees with our property backing onto bushland means there are plenty of flowers all year round for the bees to visit. And if you think I've hit the honey pot, you might be surprised to know that there are hives out there that are producing three times more than what we've got here in the same time frame. I know guys that have a literal ton of honey sitting in their backyard shed. How sweet is that? Lastly, I just wanted to quickly mention Peter's bee business. It's called O oh Beehave Honey. He's a bee coach and he breeds and sells queen bees that are extremely well behaved, which in turn creates friendly offspring. And that's exactly what you want out of a beehive. I tell you what, I was fairly scared i have to admit it to begin with i'm still going to keep wearing a suit but i can happily mow around these fellas and be around them knowing that they're quite placid i can get really close i can do videos in their flight path which you're not supposed to but it was good for an effect so yeah i would uh, i would check out peter if you're in the local area especially but he does export them and people come from all over australia to collect his famous queen bees that produce friendly bees anyway i'll leave his details down below of course this video wasn't sponsored and there's no affiliate or anything like that he's just a really good bloke and he's helped me out a lot well i hope you enjoyed this video as much as bathing in a big bathtub full of homemade bee honey homegrown <laughs> if you did make sure you give it a big sticky thumbs up and share it around and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, get into keeping bees. It, it's not a lay down easy thing to do. You can't set and forget it, but there are ways that you can, with a bit of help, keep your hive going and uh, harvest your own beautiful honey. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.